Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I am talking about watches. Today, I'm gonna to be doing the full review of my Doxa Sub Homage watch by Seastern. Now, I purchased this watch off the Seastern Mechanical Dive Watch store on AliExpress for 260 Australian dollars. If you are interested in this watch, I'll leave one of those affiliate links down below. And I think at 260 Australian dollars, you're getting a lot for your money. You're certainly getting a lot of value for money. And when you compare it against the Doxa, which costs 4,100 Australian dollars, you're certainly getting the same sort of feel of a watch for considerably less money. Obviously, it's not as good as the Doxa. I'm not trying to say that. We are looking at a homage watch from China, but I'm still quite impressed by it. So let's jump into the full review and show you why I have been impressed by this Seastern Doxa homage. Well, here is my Seastern model number SE2021-002 DOXA, that being Doxa, slash V2. So this is the version two homage to the Doxa. They even include in their serial number the actual name of the watch that they are homaging. It comes in one of these very standard sort of Pelican case style that we sort of get a lot from different watches on AliExpress. Nice and secure. I'm always happy when a watch arrives in one of these because I know the watch is going to be secure. We do get a nice little booklet from Seastern. Gives us a lot of nice information. That actually presents a little bit better than a lot of the other watches that I've had off AliExpress. We have our warranty card that's actually filled out, which is also very nice to see. Comes with some adjustment tools, the spare links that you can see here, and of course the watch. The first thing that stands out to me about this watch is something that's more about me, not so much about this watch. It just shows how much my tastes of watches have changed over the last few years. A few years ago, I would have looked at this watch and thought, well, that's kind of interesting, kind of retro sort of case look, oh, sort of an interesting different type of bracelet, bright orange face, but absolutely not for me. Not an orange face, not a retro dial, or not this style of bracelet. But nowadays, I actually really do appreciate it, and I really do like the look of this watch. And if you're not a big fan of this orange dial, well, it comes in a whole heap of other colors. You can get it in black, in red, in yellow. You can get what they call an army color, but for me, that's black and white. It also comes in this light blue. Comes in this absolutely gorgeous looking silver, which they describe as white silver. And then there's a mother of pearl. Depending on which color you get, it does change which hands you are going to get. If it's contrasting on a dial like this, you have the black hands, but there's also uh, white hands, and there's also the combination of white and black, and also a orange hand. And not only do I like the sort of retro styling of this watch, and there's this orange dial variant, but I like how it looks and it fits to my wrist. And that's because of the dimensions of the watch. And those dimensions sort of at the widest point here, the case diameter is 43.3 millimeters, the width of the watch is 13.2 millimeters. The lug to lug is a nice, compact, awesome to wear 45 millimeters. We have a lug width of 20 millimeters. And on this supply bracelet, fitted to my six and three quarter inch wrist, we are weighing in at 153.5 grams. And the thing that did attract me mostly to this watch is that orange dial. And it is a really lovely sort of satin finish orange. It's a really nice color orange. And on that orange dial, we have a bunch of printing. There's nothing applied on this one. It's all printed. We have a printed minute track all the way around. We have at the hour indices, we have a strip of loom and they are surrounded by a black line. There's also an extra line on the hours at the 12, the nine and the six. And we have a black date window frame around the date. Printed on also in black is the name Seastern and automatic 200 meters, 660 feet. The hands are at all glossed black finish, which really does pop out on that orange dial and they are loom filled. On that second hand, we have the little square, which is also loom filled. And as mentioned, there's loom within all those hours. That date window is also loomed, which is absolutely amazing. So let's stick in a loom video now. And the loom, as you can see, is a really nice crisp blue with a slight greenness to it as well. You'll see there's a bit of loom on that loom pip on the bezel insert. You'll also see that that date window is luminescent as well, which is really amazing to see at a watch at this price point. And you'll see as the time goes on, that loom maintains itself really well. It's quite impressive at a watch at this sort of price range that it continues for this much into the time frame. 
Now that's all covered with this flat piece of sapphire crystal and it's surrounded by this stainless steel bezel here. Now there's no insert on this one. It is just like a two layered sort of bezel. You can see it actually sort of works its way up a little bit and across from the sapphire crystal as well. And then it works its way down and tucks in as well. The grip here is really good as well. It looks good, but it's also really nice and easy to grab. It has a really nice action, sort of like a medium strength, I would say. You can sort of move it with one finger, but it does take effort. Very crisp sounding and just a very nice action to use. Everything also lines up very, very well. And you'll see printed onto that, that in orange we have 60, that dot there, feet, and then some numbers. And internally, that little loomed loom pip that we saw. And then in black, we've got the minute track and then five all the way around to 55. On the top of the case here, we have a circular brushing, which I think is actually done quite well. It's very neat and very tidy. I'm certainly not gonna complain about it. I have certainly seen better, but again, we're looking at a sort of more affordable watch off AliExpress, and I'm certainly happy with it at this sort of price point. The transition across to the fully polished side is very nice. There's no sharp edges there at all. You'll see that is like a high polish. We can see now that we have drilled end lugs as well. On the other side, still high polish. We do have a sign crown with a sea stern starfish, and it has a nice knurling factor, which is nice and easy to grab onto nice and easy to unscrew. Being an NH35 Seiko movement, we do have hacking and hand winding, as we can see. And if we look inside that crown stem, we can see that there's two O-rings, which is really nice to see. It gives me a little bit more faith in that 200 meters of water resistance that it states. Now, I have seen a lot of Japanese NH movements on the time grapher. However, it is always interesting to see that the differences between them. So let's see how this one is running. All right, this is not looking great, folks. This is not good at all. You'll see this snow all over the screen. That's not fantastic. That's saying that this movement has some issues. And it's obvious when we look at that 3.2 on that beat error. That needs to be under number one, otherwise there is a bit of an issue with it, and that's what's creating all this snow. But as you can see, it's running at 21,600 vibrations per hour, amplitude's a little bit low, and it's sitting around about zero to a plus five seconds. From a daily wearing perspective, that, that plus five seconds is fine, but that beat error is not a good thing to have. It's not a good sign about this particular movement, and that's why there is snow all over this screen. So that is a little bit disappointing. So those figures were a little bit disappointing, but that doesn't mean that you're gonna get one with that sort of movement. They produce a lot of these NH movements for lots and lots of different brands, and just sort of a little bit of a pick of the draw about what you get. The vast majority of the ones that I have got over the years have all been absolutely fantastic. So let's have a look at the bracelet on this. The bracelet is one of my favorite things on this watch, but also I think one of the biggest disappointments in this watch. And let me just try and show you why. First, we have female end links that really fit quite well to the case there, so that's quite nice. The transition's not too bad, and I think it does fit in quite well to the case too. And we have this beads of rice bracelet, which is polished on the beads, and we have a brushing on the sides, and then it's polished on the sides there. Now that is a real seven link part of a bracelet, as you can see. And what I'm gonna show you now is with the spare piece of the bracelet, how that actually works. So each individual bead is actually an individual piece of steel and the end links themselves are sort of solid. So we're going to get one piece of solid steel like that and then we've got the five in the center. So technically it's sort of a six link but it certainly feels and looks like a seven link. And what am I disappointed about it because I think it actually looks really good and it wears quite well. Well, I think it's just a little bit thin from this perspective. And I only think that because the watch head is actually quite heavy. So we just need a little bit more weight down here on the bracelet and on the clasp to balance that out. The clasp itself is also something that probably disappoints me a little bit. It is perfectly fine. It has got the C Stern logo there. But the thing I probably don't like about it is the type of clasp that it is. It does, however, have lots of micro adjust being four. So that's good. It has a safety latch which doesn't fit perfectly, it, it's okay, but it has one of these friction locks, and I just, I don't, I don't like them. So that maybe that's just my personal preference. Um, it is milled, however, so that's nice. Um, there's no extension within there. Overall, I'm not gonna complain about that. That's probably my more my pre personal preference that I don't like those friction locks. 
One of my favorite things about this watch, however, is that case back. It's absolutely stunning. Look how deeply etched that wave is as well. Look how good it looks. And I really also like just the general look of the screw down case back itself, how it is actually positioned and how they put all that information in and around all those sort of inset pieces there so that you can unscrew it if you want. Really looks great. Oh, and I really like that 3D etching. I think that's fantastic. It is really nice and deep. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, you'll know I appreciate a really nice case back. And here we have it on my six and three quarter inch wrist. Now, when I was talking about the top being a little bit over heavy, it sort of it, it sort of feels always like it's moving back and forward a little bit. I guess I could wear it a little bit tighter, but I don't really like wearing bracelets too tight on my wrist. I like a little bit of movement. I like moving it up and down my wrist a little bit. So, but unfortunately that just means it bobbles around a little bit on the top of my wrist. However, that aside, it fits very, very well to my wrist. Obviously having that much shorter lug to lug, it really makes it conform well to most wrist size, especially to a medium wrist like me. If we look down my arm, you can see it's quite flat. However, again, because of that shorter lug to lug, it really tucks in. Female end links help even further by helping it just fall straight away from the case. And you can see it really drops away from the case and works its way around my wrist. So what do I like about this watch? What don't I like about the watch? And what am I going to want to change about it? Well, the dial for me is a big selling point for this watch. I think it looks and presents very well, not only just the color, but the overall viewing of it. That bezel is fantastic. The bezel action is really good as well. The loom is quite amazing. It's, it's really very good for a watch at this sort of price. And I particularly love that wave on the back. Do love a good case back. What don't I like? Well, I have to say I'm quite disappointed in that movement. That's not an issue with this watch. Well, it's an issue with this particular watch. It's not an issue with C-Stones in general. Unfortunately, I probably just got not the best movement in one of these watches. Um, I really dislike these sort of friction lock type style clasps. That's just not my favorite thing. Um, you may like that and that's fine, but it's not my favorite. You also see it uses split pins rather than screw pins. It would be good if it had used screw pins. I probably would have preferred that as well. And what would I change? Well, I think it's gonna be fairly obvious, isn't it? I wanna change that movement out for something that runs a little bit better. I wanna change that clasp, not only for something more of what I like with sort of pushes, but it probably just needs a little bit of extra weight as well. So perhaps maybe think thicken up the bracelet slightly, a bracelet with a clasp which is a little bit heavier as well. It would stop the sort of watch bobbing about on my wrist. But let's head back to me now, and I'm gonna give you some of my final thoughts of this C Stern Doxa Homage. Now I do have to say, overall, this is a wonderful watch. I really have been enjoying wearing it. It's nice also to have a different style, a different dial color to wear in my collection as well. And for this sort of affordable price, I think you can't really ask too much more from a watch. And checking out the reviews of other customers who have purchased this watch from the same store that I have, they have also had an overwhelmingly positive experience. The few negative comments that have been left have been in regards to the date wheel, a couple of people have found that it hasn't lined up as well as it should, and one person unfortunately got this watch where the movement was dead on arrival. But that's only a few amongst a lot of very positive reviews, and I'm certainly giving it a very positive review as well. So thank you very much for watching my review of this Sea Stern, and I really hope to see you in the next video.